Super. Thank you very much, Michael. And uh, glad I could fill in. Um, I'm going to share the screen. So uh, many of you may not know, but uh, over the last uh, 10 years, I've developed a concept around content hubs or branded content hubs. And uh, the idea is to pull together valuable information and not build a sales oriented, who we are, what we do website. And um, I work with uh, a municipal organization called the Stanford Partnership. And they were able to get funding from the city of Stanford based on the idea that an educated community is a community that can grow. And skills from companies like HubSpot, Salesforce, um, SEM Rush, Google are highly in demand. And, and yet at the same time, it's a very confusing marketplace. If you've all seen the, the tech um, landscape chart with a million uh, different MarTech providers, um, when you talk to the average person who's running a business or looking for a job, it's hard to even know where to start. And so we set out a, a criteria to find certification programs that were free and that you could post on LinkedIn. And um, with the belief that if you got certifications in either uh, digital skills, which uh, we're running through Google um, and content marketing, which we're running through HubSpot and SEM Rush, uh, and that's the one that I have uh, been working on for the last six, eight weeks. Um, <clears throat> the idea is that people who get these skills and then have the opportunity to put them into practice, whether they're looking for a job, coming out of school, or running a business, um, they can increase their marketing, increase their sales, and increase the value that they have to their employer, or help speed up their business. And if you can do that in a local community, um, you can help people find jobs globally, you can help local businesses succeed and uh, create an economic stimulus for the, um, for the local economy coming out of the pandemic. So that was the thesis that we got a small grant. Um, I took my normally commercial marketing branded content hub approach, um, which we've developed a methodology so that we can stand up a content hub, which think online magazine or even online television show that's interactive, uh, that doesn't sell, but rather educates, informs, uh, and, and provides a lot of value to your audience. Um, we've applied it to this idea that an educated community can help the local economy. So uh, we put the word out and within less than three weeks, we had uh, 60 registrants, 30 for Google and 30 for content marketing. And the content marketing is strategy. It's not a click here, click there, how to upload files, how to upload email lists, um, how to, you know, it's not a how-to class. It's much more of a strategic approach, um, how to set your metrics, how to set goals, how to, uh, what your team needs to know and understand, how to use SEO to identify and build your audience. Um, so those are the kinds of topics that we covered. And we partnered with um, not only the big tech companies, but we have a local startup. Um, Michael, I think you know, remember Shannon. Uh, so what you're looking at on, on my screen is an implementation of a, uh, it started out as a presentation and over the pandemic grew into what I'm about to show you, which sort of mimics a conference, if you will, with trade show booths um, in, in a uh, environment where you have an agenda, you have uh, the ability to do one-to-many presentations, you can have small group presentations, and depending on the, the modules you select as you set it up, you create an experience for people, and you put the content online that 
will help you achieve the objective, right? So when we communicate, we're trying to get people to believe something, learn something, take an action, um, uh, network, right? So if you think of going to the Jacob Javits Center, somebody puts on a conference there, we wanna be able to create that experience online. And we, we use the Incaptive environment to set up the learning experience for our learners. And Shannon was just tremendously valuable in helping guide us through what our learning objectives were and the content that we identified and then how to set it up in here. So I thought I'd start with a little tour of the course that we set up and then use the environment to show you the elements of the education itself. So if you're interested in uh, these certifications um, for your own career or somebody that you know, I'll give you a little overview. So with that as background, um, when you enter the, um, the learning environment, there's a, a foyer that you uh, can watch a little video. Hey, Keith Reynolds here. Welcome to uh, Tech Forward. It's uh, content. I'm not going to make you watch everything, but you can have a welcome video and it can even um, uh, oh, going into the environment can be dependent on someone finishing watching the video. We didn't set it up that way. You have a, a agenda board that has um, the current classes. Now there's nothing running right now, but when you load up the agenda, the three or four <clears throat> courses that are currently available and online and, and open uh, will show up on the lead leaderboard in the lobby. Uh, so then we have the entire curriculum here on the agenda. And because I'm an administrator, you can see the entire agenda. Whereas if you were a learner, it would just focus you on what we have available right now. Um, everybody who's been in the class puts up their profile and uh, we can chat and network. You can also see, put your LinkedIn profile. And uh, what we found is that as people were doing the learning, they really came together and started to build their network together. That was uh, a really cool element that we didn't plan for, but when we set this up, uh, we now have people uh, we're, we're getting together for a happy hour and, and the interactivity was, was really cool. Then you have resources. And these are all the materials for the class. Um, so I always believe that, that you've got to have an ROI. So I gave away the ROI calculator that we give away on our website. We had an introduction to HubSpot Academy, the SEM Rush training fundamentals, um, and then the individual classes. And so anytime we had mention of something during a course in the agenda, you could go around uh, here and find the materials. And there's two modes. One is to use the hub, the um, Incaptive, uh, which is the software platform I'm showing you, uh, video, and you can record and do live streaming right within Incaptive. Or the less expensive option is to use um, a hyperlink to Zoom, and then you can record in Zoom and and save the uh, recordings, and then post those recordings if you record to the cloud just very easily right in here. So if you couldn't make the class, you're able to come back here and watch the class. Now the format was Monday, we get together and provide an overview of what to expect. Thursday, we have a Q&A session and the goal is to show up the following Monday having completed the online training from HubSpot and SEM Rush. So we didn't actually develop the curriculum. Why reinvent the wheel? These are free courses with certifications and the material is just top notch. So an example would be of how we got started was uh, in week one, we took um, inbound marketing. And I'll show you just, Michael, keep me posted on time. Um, but we provided an overview. And uh, yeah, you have about five and a half minutes left. All right, so I'm going to screen through these. If you want more information, feel free uh, to reach out to me. Um, uh, we hired a recent college graduate uh, who is just a beast on using technology and super smart. Um, and, and I've now got her working on three different projects. Uh, we, we 
it's always amazing that you hear when the when the student's ready, the teacher arrives. Well, here was me, the teacher, and I was ready and the student arrived and, and she's just done a phenomenal job. Um, content marketing, um, what, what the goals are, how we did an overview of how the tech platform's going to work. Um, what is inbound marketing? So we just gave people a, a grounding in what they're about to experience how inbound marketing works. It's attract, engage, and delight. And the HubSpot software, and I use SharpSpring, you know, pick, pick a marketing automation CRM platform. Those are the ways that you implement inbound marketing. Um, then we provided an uh, overview of the course. There's 11 lessons, five hours of content, and then uh, each lesson has a quiz. Uh, these are the topics that were covered. Um, within inbound marketing. And then we went over the exam, 60 questions. You have three hours to take it. Um, if you don't pass uh, getting 45 questions right, you have to wait um, 12 hours to take the class again, but you can continue to work on it till you get your certification. The goal is success, not, not scores. And um, we provided an overview uh, of how to get started and so forth. So another element that we had within the resources were the Q&A. And here we were able to post. Best suited for. Who is our product best suited for? Um, what price point do we want to be at and why? So you can see how it's very easy to organize all of these video assets, presentations, um, uh, links out to the courses uh, within here in the resources section. The other thing that we did was because we had partners in here, the city of Stanford, the Stanford partnership, we we're, were able to fully brand it. So the experience really carries through and the people that were promoting the course to you are there and available. Um, one of the items within the lobby, but uh, I'm sorry, within the agenda, we didn't use, but we can have office hours. So an agenda item could be from four to six on Thursday, we hold an office hours and people link in and are in a, in a small group room within the, um, within the learning experience. And so we, we have um, the ability to just have live conversations um, as well as a lecture hall kind of environment where we can do one to many and a panel environment if we had three instructors. So that it's just fully flexible on how to set up and you can take a topic and then just really dive in and create the experience for your users. I bet I'm running up on, on my time. Happy to open it up to questions. I will say that I spent on average for four weeks, 12 hours a week getting these certifications. And I just, I'm, I'm walking on a cloud with all this new information in my head and these certifications on my, my LinkedIn uh, screen. So it's been a, a fulfilling for my, myself as well as for my business being able to take this, this methodology that we've developed and, and show how to stand up a content hub very quickly. Thank you. Okay, um, uh, Alan wants to know if the deck is gonna be available after the presentation. Um, I don't know if there is a deck, so to speak. I mean, that, that's certainly recording of this meeting is going to be posted to YouTube. Um, Keith, is there a deck to share? Um, we'll be running this class again. And um, the, the way we make it available is that you register. So I really, I, I did this on the fly. I don't even have a policy for you on how to do it. Um, but I, if you're interested in this, either just my own personal experience and I can you know, point you in the right direction or in, um, in about a month, we're gonna start promoting the next wave of classes and you're welcome to put your name in the, an email address in the, um, in the chat here on Zoom and I'll make sure you get invited. Um, but, but I'm trying to create some order in the chaos here and uh, I, I would need to check if I can start letting people into this environment because right now it's for the people who registered. No, there was just there was just some content that you kind of went through quickly that I had wanted to just linger on. That's why I was asking. Sure. Um, you know, reach out to me. Uh, I'll be glad to go through it with you. Um, 
it'd be great to reconnect with you again. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Uh, that is 15 minutes, but if um, if there's any other, so Keith, are you, it looks like you had 30 people um, coming in for the last session. That was the limiter 30 on HubSpot and 30 on Google. Um, is it going to be open to another cohort of 60 people? Yes. In a month? And, and we really don't have, because it's virtual, we, we don't have the constraints of a physical room. Um, and and in captive has had a, up to 500 people on the platform or more. Um, the number that sticks in my head is 500. But uh, no, we'd welcome you to join us um, in, in the next class. Uh, we have Stanford Innovation Week coming up, which is our early stage South by Southwest, but this is North by Northeast. Uh, and and so we're going to be doing a quick overview of the course uh, the week of September 21st. I think it is Innovation Week is is the 24th and 25th um, for the core program, but there'll be events all week long. Um, and so we'll be promoting it there. And then at the end of September, early October, we'll be running this cohort again. Oh, great. Okay. So uh, is this something you would want to promote via the Trusted Referral Network for members of the Trusted Referral Network? Is your question, would we want to promote this to them? Yes. Uh, absolutely. Here, let okay. me. And I can do that, you know, through the newsletter at least. Oh, fantastic. What I can yeah. do right now is just do, um, let's see. Here's where to watch for um, announcements. Michael, I'll be sure to coordinate with you and, and get um, this out as we figure it out. And the other thing I'll put is the, link to this program itself. Okay. Um, and I would, I would say that by early September, we'll have our, our act together as far as the next one. Um, we, we were funded by a small grant from the city of Stanford based on this idea that an educated community can uh, make a vibrant community in a, in a global economy. So uh, I think from the feedback um, I, I did a little five minute video yesterday of all of our students feedback. And you can actually, you can see that. I got one more link to share with you. Do, 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 do. Uh, I just posted okay. the, the video of the students and what they learned. It was great. We inter we just started the session yesterday and they all were saying, here's what I got out of, of the class. And it was so interesting. We had different people were coming from different places and we kind of got a range of all the things that you can get when you, have when you, you add to your skill set. And I wrote a little blog on, about oh, it. There it is. Okay. See it. So, okay. I'm grabbing it now. Happy to answer any other questions. Any other questions for Keith? Maybe about the curriculum, curriculum themselves. So we did inbound marketing, uh, social media, email marketing, which was really cool. It was about how to make email a conversation. Um, and then the last one was SEM Rush, SEO fundamentals, covered technical, backlinking, and keywords. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I am going to paste in the chat the order in which I captured folks. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, Keith, I have you here. I'm going to take you off since you already did your presentation. Um, so Sarita, Faith, Mark, and then Alan. Um, three minutes, how about that? And um, if you wanna talk about sort of transition, if you are transitioning uh, in any way as the pandemic load lightens, I won't say it's disappearing, but it's lightning, at least for some of us, um, you know, that's one topic you might wanna share. Um, so I will uh, time you for three minutes each. I'm gonna put you in uh, 
speaker view so that your um, your video expands. If everybody else can mute, um, Sarita, you are up. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. I'm Sarita Jackson with the Global Research Institute of International Trade. My firm helps companies uh, that are looking to expand overseas, help them to increase their revenue by exporting a product either to the US or from the United States. I work a lot of, with food manufacturers, but recently I've been with MIA, I've been working with engineering companies. And I'll just tell a quick story about uh, another client that I had actually with a law firm where there was a particular case about imports of a product from a South American country into the US and they needed assistance with research. That's uh, my focus, research and strategy development. But for, for them, it was the research on um, looking at the trends of this particular product over since 2018, the imports of that product into the US. And it was, I won't get into the legalities of the case, but basically helping that law firm uh, collect that data and understand the trends to help in their particular case. So that's a new client uh, that I've worked with. So any lawyers that have any international trade related cases, looking at the impact of imports here in the U.S. on the overall industry for uh, the U.S. industry. Uh, as far as the question on transitions, for me, the main thing that I noticed this year, which has really kept me busy, busy, is that now companies have a renewed confidence in the global economy. Last year, a lot of it was just kind of guiding companies on how to navigate with everything going on with the pandemic, their supply chain, identifying other markets. And now those companies are ready to invest. And so that has been keeping me very busy. Literally, I tell everyone since New Year's Eve, the phone has been ringing the emails, uh, the, receiving emails. So I've been working with a number of companies in different industries, as I mentioned, law firms, engineering firms, and food manufacturers. Again, Sarita Jackson with the Global Research Institute of International Trade, or GRIT with two eyes for short. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I will uh, cancel that and we'll move on to, that would be Faith Thomas's. You're on mute, Faith. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, um, I hope everyone can hear me. I am on my terrace in Manhattan, and uh, I think today is noise day. We got a helicopter, a fire engine above, and uh, I think there's construction to the north, to the south, to the east, and the west. So if you can't hear me, I'm sorry. <laughs> we can hear you fine. Oh, great. Okay. Um, I also wanted to, I'm a writer, and I'm a solopreneur, and work both directly with clients and as a subcontractor to other agencies or firms for uh, solopreneurs. And um, I recently met with someone who's not here today who told me that I come across in these meetings as terribly serious. And so I need to dispel that impression right away. So um, essentially what I do is I help companies or people or whoever articulate their message as succinctly as possible and then translate that either into a positioning statement, uh, a written piece such as a um, website. I do a lot of name development because that is so concise and targeted. And in terms of transitions, what I'm finding is a new line of business for me is resumes because companies might be doing this or that, but individuals are now seeing opportunity to move or feeling that they're um, uh, stagnating where they are and can use this the same kind of writing that I do, which is, it's got to be short. You got to get someone's life onto one page. So um, that's the essence of it. I have I've developed the tagline on point communications. And if you look at my website, I have selected a ballerina on point as, as my um, visual image. So my fantasy of being a ballerina is now being manifest on my website. And um, I'm very flexible. I've got experience in a wide range of industries. I can, uh, as I said, work directly with clients or I can be part of your team and be introduced to your client. And I've got uh, business cards from many, many organizations with my name on it. So um, 
I welcome anyone that you know knows of opportunities uh, in in verbal communications. So, did hey. I use that time? Uh, you, you had thirty three seconds left, but you don't have to use it all. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. Keith, when you left, your your the photograph above your wall became you. All right. Um. <laughs> Let's move on. So, uh, Mark, then Alan, then Jason. Mark, you are up. Hi, this is Mark. And um, actually, I'm pretty excited. Uh, I can't remember who it was who referred me, but um, I have a presentation tomorrow on di digital marketing strategy with an outfit in Ohio. And somebody in this group referred me, but it's uh, SEAC. And I'm actually pretty excited about it. Um, so, you know, I'm going to take them through the why they should have a digital marketing strategy as well as, you know, some of the options that are available, social media, email, uh, websites, um, communities, especially communities if you're a B2B company. So that's very interesting. Um, Mark, you're freezing up there. Can you hear us? Uh, we may. Is, 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 you were freezing up a little bit. It's frozen again. Do other people see him as frozen? Yeah. All right. I think we'll come back to Mark, um, but it looks like his uh, connection is uh, failing him. All right, um, let us switch then to Alan, then Jason, then Sharon. Um, well, thank you, Michael, as always, and hopefully I won't freeze. Um, I am uh, Alan Winnikoff. I'm a founding partner of the public relations and um, digital communications firm, Sales and Winnikoff Communications. I wanna take you back to 2003, those of you that are old enough to remember 2003. Uh, we were coming not long before out of a dot-com bust. Um, people were, were, it was not a great time for the economy. I had spent my career in corporate uh, PR, uh, both on the corporate side and the agency side. My business partner, my now business partner, Karina Sales, uh, had also had um, the same, similar background. We found ourselves competing for clients as freelancers. And I said to her, um, why don't we partner. We know each other. We've known each other by that, that point for many years. Um, and we'd be stronger together. So we both come, came from a media background. We both worked a lot in television, other forms of media. Um, and um, we also uh, had a very strong background in children's media content. Um, so we did partner. We started handling clients in 2004. Uh, and if you, again, if you can look, think back to all the way back then, uh, there was no social media. There wasn't really digital communications in the same sense. There wasn't really content marketing. Um, but we were a traditional PR firm. That, meant, that means that we got uh, stories in newspapers that once upon a time was newspapers, um, magazines, TV shows. Um, in the, those nearly 20 years since our company had, was founded, the, the landscape out there, the media landscape has certainly evolved. So over the years, we have built a social media division. Uh, we're not a big company, we're a boutique company, but we're able to do a lot of things at once. So interestingly, clients still want that traditional PR, that old school PR, but we would not be a functional agency if we didn't offer the broader scope of services. So we're very good at social media. We handle social media for most of our clients, turnkey. Uh, we also do content marketing, paid content that is. And we brought offer us a, a wide scope of other, other services, including bringing in third party partners for things that we don't do, but that we can still project manage like building websites, which could be of interest to some of you. Uh, and other marketing related marketing services that I know some of you guys do, SEO and other things. So we handle some of it in-house, some of it we outsource. We never white label our partners. They deal directly with our clients, but it does give us the opportunity to present a much a more dynamic scope of services to new business opportunities. Uh, and in terms of the types of businesses we work on, we still work a lot in media and a lot in children's media because that was our 
where we how we grew up. Karina, my partner, and I we did a lot of that. Uh, so nowadays, not just TV and not just books, but podcasts. We have a couple of clients who have podcasts, one for kids, one for adults, um, other digital content. We also handle consumer products, again, for, to- for kids and for adults. Um, thank you, Michael. Um, and um, we also work on a lot of other clients, though, that are not media related, attorneys, uh, food products, um, nonprofits. So it's a broad scope. Um, and if you are looking to talk about how we might be able to partner with you and add to your scope of services, happy to have that conversation. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let's see, Jason, then Sharon. Um, Mark joined again. It looks like uh, we'll try to get to you at the end, Mark, uh, so you could uh, finish it up. So it would be Jason Kramer, then Sharon. Sure. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Jason Kramer, founder of Cultivice uh, in New York. Um, so today, I just want a quick show of hands. How many of your clients are using a revenue growth platform for their business? And, and what do you mean by that? I don't know, maybe you do. Okay. Doesn't look like right. many. Um, what, so what, what is, is a revenue growth of, platform? Uh, so revenue growth platform, for those that aren't familiar, um, is a com- combination of a few elements. So it's having a CRM, having a pipeline, having an inbound, outbound marketing strategy, and having your business systems integrated all cohesively into one platform to be able to grow the revenue of the business. What we find is a lot of companies are fragmented in this space. And when they try to put systems in place, and um, Keith mentioned in his presentation about HubSpot and all these different technologies, and there's literally thousands of them out there, if not millions, uh, depending upon what niche you're going into, but the reality is that they're not easy to install and to actually know how to use. And that's why 69%, which is a recent Harvard business study, said that almost 70% of businesses will fail trying to implement one of these systems on their own. Um, and they'll spend a lot of money, upwards of fifty, dollars $100,000 failing in the process. Um, <clears throat> and that's because they don't have the experience. They don't have the inside personnel that knows how to set up these systems. Uh, so we work with both B2B as well as direct-to-consumer companies that are typically spending north of three to $5,000 a month on inbound marketing. We are not a marketing agency. We don't do any legion. We strictly help companies leverage these strategic growth, growth platforms um, and develop a strategy and implementation plan on how to use them. Um, so companies come to us because we educate and train their team. We do a lot of handholding um, and we work with clients very closely. Um, everything we do is completely customized. The other thing that's unique about our take on this, um, which many of you know, I have over 20 years of marketing experience. So even though we don't do marketing, we understand the language. We understand how to connect their systems to their existing marketing efforts. Um, and we're only the only company in the state of New York that's certified with SharpSpring, which is the platform we use, um, and one of 30 in the world. So when companies are looking for systems, um, it doesn't have to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, you know, we could come in at you know, under $20,000 a year um, and be able to deliver a very uh, comprehensive solution. Um, so just quickly, who I'm looking to meet, while well, direct businesses who I mentioned um, have to fall into that criteria that I have a sales team of two to 20 people are spending thirty dollars to $50,000 a year on marketing. Um, but I'm also looking to meet with agencies. Um, a lot of digital marketing agencies that have clients are spending north of $10,000 a month. Um, I know Jeff, you and I have spoken about this, Bryce, we've talked. Um, those are great referral partners because they don't usually offer the lead nurturing component. They offer the lead gen. So it's a great synergy. Um, and just lastly, if I have just 30 seconds, okay, um, <clears throat> change for me. Um, so as you can see behind me, for those of you who've seen me in the past, I'm actually in a new office. So I just moved in two weeks ago, um, which is great. I finally just needed to get out of the house after working from home for seven years. Um, the pandemic uh, was, you know, just a, I don't know, I guess a shake up for me, like, all right, new scenery, new things. So um, one of my clients is an agency who actually is coincidentally 10 minutes from my home. So they had some extra space and now I'm working here and uh, forging that relationship a little bit further. So good to see everybody today. And I just like to add that I'm a customer of Jason's and everything that we taught using the HubSpot, we're actually using, doing ourselves with Jason's support. And he's just phenomenal in Sharp Spring. After being a HubSpot agency for five years, um, when I had to launch my own company, I did an analysis and chose Sharp Spring. So, Jason, you're awesome. 
Thanks, Keith. You too. <laughs> Love nice you, endorsement. Yeah, I have a question for you. Does Sharp Spring in sort of include all of those elements, CRM, polypipeline, in, inbound, outbound, and are, are yes. CRM systems like that becoming more expansive? Uh, so the first answer is yes, it does include those components and, and more than that. Um, but yes, I think what, what I'm seeing is that you're finding a lot of companies developing products that offer one of the components. So landing page builders, CRMs, uh, you know, Zoho has a new product um, that, that we know somebody that's using. And so you have a lot of people that are trying to do a lot of different things, um, but they usually fall flat. No, no system is perfect. I mean, listen, any system has its, its flaws and limitations, um, but you need to know what those are and, and whether or not that matters for your business. Um, so I would just say, you know, write down a list of what anyone would be looking for, one of your clients, looking to choose a system, make sure you're hitting as many of those, um, you know, needs as, as possible. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, Sharon, then Bryce, then Jeff, I think had to cut out. Um, so it would be uh, Rajiv. Um, so Sharon, you're up. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sharon Shanzer. My company is called RLD Group, and this is my 21st year in business. Um, and basically, we are a graphic design agency. We also do a lot of business consulting. My background is in technology and design. I started my career as the first ever IT manager um, at Condé Nast Publishing many decades ago um, and sort of worked my way through different um, positions with uh, design and marketing and everything and then eventually stumbled upon having my own firm. Uh, started in San Francisco about 21 years ago, as I mentioned, and now I'm based in New York City. Um, I work with a lot of different types of companies, very big firms, banks, technology firms, um, and also small companies and individual proprietors. Um, my services that I provide include WordPress design and development, print design and development, packaging design and development, um, Shopify. And so as Michael calls me, I am a Jane of all trades. Um, sorry, I'm done. Anyway, um, I, I work on my own, but I use contractors for some of the work that I do. I also do a lot of the work myself. My background is, a, as I mentioned, in technology, so I'm able to do a vast majority of the work myself. So you'll find me sort of coding a website and designing a pa uh, packaging at the same time, simultaneously, one hand on the packaging job and another on the um, WordPress work website. And I really enjoy the sort of breadth of all the work that I do. So for me, the more the merrier. Um, I was going to give an example of an ideal client that I had, um, which is a start was now is not anymore startup um, pharmaceutical company, and they were doing direct to consumer and um, uh, consumer packaged goods. Uh, sorry, I just lost my turn. Direct to consumer um, a product that was not even named when they first came to me. They were an existing client. They said we want to do this new thing using this old thing that we sort of have lying around. So it involves everything from helping them come up with a name for the company determining the URL, all the packaging, setting up Zendesk, setting up their WordPress site, setting up their Shopify site, um, and so on and so forth. And for me, just everything, basically, oh, I'm also doing um, their, mail, their email marketing and WordPress, I mean, excuse me, in MailChimp. I work both with MailChimp and Constant Contact, so it really depends on the client. In this case, the client was more, was more suitable for them to use MailChimp. So when someone comes to me and has all these different needs, I am the happiest contract you'll ever find because I can handle all those things. And if there's something I can't handle, I usually know somebody from my network, whether it's someone in this group or in all the different groups I work with. So um, my philosophy is come and ask me if I can't do it. I will not say, no, I can't and be done. I will just say, I can't do that, but I will find somebody for you who can. Um, and that's the, that's it. So um, my, my name is Sharon Chancer. My company is RLD Group and we do everything from print, PowerPoint, WordPress, and Shopify and everything else in between. Thank you. Thank you. And if uh, some of those people are, are interested in potentially joining the Trusted Referral Network, I'd be happy to have them come and try it out. That's after all it is. That's why we call it the Trusted Referral Network, because these are people you trust. Okay. Um, Bryce, and then Rajiv, and then I will go. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Bryce with Line of a Marketer. Um, so what I'll talk about today is traffic. So a lot of the times um, when you have marketing, the goal is to, for, for that marketing, whatever it is, for people to see it. 
And um, that's kind of what one of our specialties is, is we find, you know, kind of some unique ways to deliver traffic um, to the content that actually gets conversions. So if you have something that now converts that you're confident you want more people to see, that's what we do. So talk to us about um, supercharging the, uh, the traffic that comes to the marketing that you spent so much money on. And I'll see my time today. You don't want to talk at all about your uh, your arms uh, um, supplier to uh, agencies approach. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess I can speak on that. So what what we've um, what we've kind of what's happened with the company over the pandemic is my business partner created a whole bunch of cool stuff, and it just makes more sense for us to partner up with other marketing agencies because they understand what we do and how we do it. Um, even though we have our own retail clients. So we have a, we're kind of an arms dealer <laughs> for other agencies and we white label a lot of our, a lot of our technology to other agencies. Yeah. Really interesting technology. And, um, and Bryce's partner, Earl Florimata, is that his name? Yeah. Uh, is really a, uh, a genius, a technical genius, uh, a marketing technical genius and, uh, with a particular focus in SEO and SEM. Um, and, you know, with in partnership with Earl, um, Bryce, and and the team at um, Mind of a Market have come up with some really interesting solutions. Uh, so, particularly if you're an SEO or SEM, you should speak to Bryce. I've enjoyed using Ink. That's your product, right? No, I uh, no, that's that's, uh, for, that's from Gary, but we actually use it as well in yeah. combination with uh, with some other stuff for AI grading. Well, then I'd love to connect with you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you guys should definitely speak. Okay, um, Jeff, uh, uh, Jeff, I think Jeff had to leave. I don't see Jeff here. Okay, so Rajiv, you are up. And Rajiv, if you want to talk about uh, also um, the uh, your events coming up in New York. Uh, by the way, I apologize. I did not get into the newsletter last time. Uh, I will try to remember to put them in this time. Okay, perfect. Yeah, thanks for that, Michael. Um, so um, we... Uh, we organize events at exclusive uh, venues like we very <laughs> using uh, kids speak or uh, millennial speak. We say these are dope locations at exclusive events. Well, not on that order, but the excitement got to me. OK, uh, these are essentially rooftop parties. And uh, as of now, we're kind of celebrating New York City opening up with three events. And we're in the know of all these kind of things happening. So we're happy to uh, provide information on other events as well that are in the space. These are typically rooftop parties that include social mixers as well as fashion shows. Um, and yeah, we're having three events, uh, one, and they're all on Thursdays. Uh, the first is this Thursday. The next one will be next month. And I've shared the link, so feel free to, uh, go check it out. Use TRN as your promo code, and that makes the ticket complimentary. And feel free to share that with uh, anyone that you know who likes to have a good time. And, uh, you know, uh, and also this way, then they'll learn about TRN and, you know, come here and enrich all of our lives. Uh, as far as what do I do, my day job, if you will, is reputation repair. And what we do is we essentially rescue companies that have been the recipient of a lot of hate online. And it and we basically help them get out of it, get under that, out of that dark cloud by deleting all that stuff from Google, deleting bad press from Google and deleting bad reviews from Google, Facebook, Amazon. Uh, and I just want to clarify that this service is intended to help companies and people and businesses in peril, not to help bad actors get away with it. I just want to make that super clear. This, if a bad actor approaches and there even as a whiff of any kind of child engagement or anything, yeah, get out of here. I don't want to talk to you. Uh, I just want to like be very upfront about that. Uh, and my ask is introduction to people in PR, corporate communications, as well as uh, publicity. Uh, and, um, uh, and the reason why I say publicity is because publicity is specifically tied to entertainment companies like uh, record labels or magazines or, you know, venues, you know, like that. Uh, that that's my ask. And typically these people either refer business to us or white label us. Either is fine. 
a lot of agencies white label us that <laughs> compete with us on SEO and other stuff, but they white label us for reputation repair. So it's a win, win, win. And everyone goes home happy. We offer a performance guarantee, which means that if the outcome is not delivered in our forecasted time frame, which is typically 60 to 90 days, the client has the option of asking for a full refund or giving us time to try something else, uh, which could be for the same price or a slightly higher price. So that's basically it. Uh, uh, R Square Media, be seen or not be seen. And I'm trying out a new tagline, which is misery is history. What do you think of it? Okay. <laughs> hey, Rajiv, uh, I have a client that has somebody posting uh, on Instagram some bad stuff, and they're trying to figure out how to deal with that right now. Is that something that you would be involved in? Potentially, because if that stuff is coming up on Google, we can delete that stuff from Google for sure. As far as the whatever links or postings on the platform, that's something that my team will have to investigate to see if that's something we can help with. Uh, and do you know Danny Mizrahi? The name okay. sounds vaguely familiar. He's, he's got a client who's an entertainment client. Um, they're actually an agent for many um, hip hop artists. Um, and I think some of their artists uh, push the edge a little bit, sometimes may end up on the wrong side of the reputation management or reputation repair. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, I will see if I can introduce you there. So I will go. Um, uh, I didn't leave anybody off, did I? I leave anybody out? Okay, I think I got everyone. Uh, so I will put a timer on. Uh, my name is Michael Bendit. Um, as you know, my company is Software Development Resources, and I'm an independent rep for software development teams, uh, boutique teams that specialize in different areas. So our, our main areas um, are marketing applications, which is why I started this group, and also startups, uh, and sometimes there's an overlap. Um, I, we're currently working, I'll give you some examples, we're currently working with a client who is launching a a very complex community uh, for event producers. Um, and that includes everybody from all of the freelancers, the, you know, the, the specialist videographers, photographers, audio people, booth manufacturers, and creating a, a, a complete, um, uh, I guess, environment uh, community for those people. It's called Event Web. It hasn't launched yet, um, but it's got lots of constituents, lots of capabilities, uh, including directories of various sorts, uh, some paid, some not. Um, and uh, one of my teams, which is a dual short team, is building that, I think, for $25,000, um, which you know sort of blows my mind sometimes because it is very complex. Um, and they are using WordPress, um, so that helps keep the cost down, um, but uh, there's still a lot that's going on there. And um, that just gives you a feel for sort of the extent of some of the stuff we can do. And so they're, you know, in essence, a startup. Um, but of course, part of what they're doing is marketing on behalf of uh, the entire event uh, production community. Um, I also do a lot of work. Uh, in fact, that job came through a partnership with a, um, uh, an agency. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, that's where I get a lot of our work. A lot of the agencies that we work with, even though they're digital agencies, they don't always have those resources in-house to do the work themselves. So they need to outsource it. And a lot of times they're not sure where to go. Um, so even if they specialize in, let's say, they have in-house resources for WordPress, they might run out of those resources. In other words, they tap out. Uh, somebody leaves, um, they have more work than they can handle, and so they need to outsource, um, or they just don't have the right resource in-house. Um, also recently got, uh, there was an inquiry on Mosaic uh, for, for uh, WordPress resources. I think somebody was looking to hire some freelancers. Um, you know, we, I don't represent freelancers. I only represent teams, um, just because, you know, my feeling is that, um, Teams tend to be more stable. They're in business. They've been in business for a while. They're going to be there when you call them. Um, and they have got more capacity. Um, so it's not just one person whose capacity obviously is, is limited. Uh, if it's a team, um, they've got other people. They can also hire more people. 
Um, so great leads for me, as I said, uh, anybody who's got a startup idea that is software based um, or uh, is an agency, uh, and it's clearly anybody who's doing any marketing work directly. Um, uh, Michael, did yes. I introduce you to the patent attorney that I know, Larry Rosenthal? I do not think so, no. Okay, I'll happy. go ahead and do that. Yeah, I think you'll be a good connection for you, yeah. Great, thank you. Um, anything else anybody want to chat about? I will go back into um, gallery view. Um, Sarita. Yeah, actually, uh, one thing, speaking of a need, and I know I had a little bit of extra time, if anyone knows of anyone who is familiar with the market in Hong Kong, I have a meeting this afternoon with someone regarding market expansion to Hong Kong. So anyone, I know this is very broad, I'll get more details, but just anyone that's familiar with the Hong Kong market and doing business in Hong Kong, I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, Mark. I know I know someone who was who gave a conference in China, like Beijing. So I know that Hong Kong is a part of China. So right. yeah, yeah. Let, let's connect offline. Please do. Mark, okay. I'm sorry. By the way, uh, Mark, you got cut off. So um, do you do you want to uh, finish up? Add another two minutes. No, good? I'm good. Okay, you did you did freeze. Um, your it looks like your connection was sort of glitchy in the middle of your presentation. Oh, good. Um. Any other comments, uh, uh, Rajiv? I think I'm going to try to show up at one of your uh, your upcoming events, maybe even this Thursday. I need to get back into the city, see my kids. I'm now in uh, I'm now out in New Jersey, but it's only a train ride train ride away. Yeah, I'd love to have you there. Uh, so Keith, thank you for uh, for picking up uh, the uh, the slack. There was an opportunity to uh, to pitch and. Um, and showcase and what you're doing is, is fascinating stuff. And I'm glad to see that in captive uh, is part of it. They're really kicking, uh, kicking in Michael and we appreciate your early support and look forward. Actually, to I may have somebody for you um, who runs a, um, a meeting for event production people uh, and they host, um, they do bring on uh, companies that want to give demos. Um, so Shannon might be interested in doing that um, uh, one Thursday night. I think you get as much as a half hour. Okay. Awesome. Um, Great. I, yeah, I've I been will. repping her product and the, the, her one thing that really differentiates her, they're small, but they give great service.